Okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about these early war Delaware regimental coats. The first thing I'll say right off the bat is that some of the construction details on these are, in fact, conjectural. We don't have any surviving examples, so some of the stuff we sort of fill in the gaps. However, that being said, there are definitely some solid do's and don'ts with the construction of these. And I wanted to go over briefly some of those details. Then we can talk about a little bit about some of the conjectural stuff. And then I also want to compare the, this is the um, enlisted man, man's coat. And then you have the officer's coat over here. So there are, we can talk about the differences between those. So the first thing, when we talk about these coats, the biggest focus on the construction details are the lapels. Now you can see here the lapels and they actually have 10 buttonholes. Um, now a lot of people think that all they had were 10 buttonholes as, as a standard, standard thing, but the truth is it actually depended on the height of the person because you figure the person who, a person who's taller it's going to be a longer lapel and the longer the lapel it's you're going to have more space between the buttonholes and if the person is too tall or too short it starts to look funny with the spacing so there's no hard and fast rule but generally speaking anyone over probably six feet tall is probably going to have 11 buttonholes or 11 buttons down the lapel somebody who's maybe between 5'6 and 5'11 are going to have the 10 and anybody under 5'6 is going to only have nine. Now, again, that's not a hard and fast rule, but what starts to happen, as I said before, the taller the person, they start to space out more and it starts to look odd. Um, and generally the lapel will end at a person's waist, give or take. I have seen some variations with that. So I have 10 on this one. And um, the other thing with the button holes is they generally don't want to be any more than two inches apart here. Um, these might be slightly more, like maybe slightly more is okay, slightly less is okay, but in general, um, they want to be about two inches apart. So that's where you kind of get in with the height, with the height thing, it's, it, can be, it can be problematic. So. Another thing with the buttons holes is that when you start to make them, you want to make them exactly parallel with the lapel. The mistake that people make is as you move up the coat and it starts to curve, you still want to keep the button holes parallel with the bottom of this. So as you move up, you will start to see that they kind of, especially at the top here, they start to kind of tilt upward. You see that on a lot of originals, um, and that's what you kind of want to aim for. Some some people who make these coats, the mistake they make is they kind of try to they keep try to kind of keep them straight on the lapel, and that gives like sort of like a rainbow effect, which is not really correct. Um, so another construction detail is the placement of the buttons. So you don't want them to be too far in the center and you don't want them to be hanging over the edge. Really the best thing you want to shoot for is kind of just maybe like a little bit from the edge. That is really, that is really where you want the placement to be. So those are solid do's and don'ts. Another, another thing is, is you want to get this, this curve, right? That's a big mistake. You'll see a lot of movies where they have it, it's like straight down and um, that was not correct. Where it's going to fasten are at button one and four. And on the fourth one, <clears throat> that's gonna be kind of probably over roughly where your heart is. So you have, now you will see some coats that have a bit of a different button configuration on them where it's like two, 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 and those actually do not fasten at one and four, they would go to one and three. But generally speaking, it's one and four, and it's going to fasten over um, 
the fourth one is going to fasten over where your heart is, and then you're going to have you're going to have kind of this this um, angle on these coats. So those are just some of the solid do's and don'ts. Um, now, so for some conjectural stuff, the pockets. Um, here you have the vertical pocket flap. Was it really vertical? We do see some original verticals on like, such as the Von Germain image. Um, it could have been horizontal or it would be like this. It's hard to say. I put them vertical so that I could have this kind of out here and have the vertical pocket flap. Another thing that would be conjectural would be the um, long work buttonholes, false buttonholes on the pocket flap. It's hard to say if they had those. Probably, maybe not. It, it we, we know that the Delaware Regiment was very uh, well dressed, so it's possible. I just like doing those long work buttonholes. They look nice, so I put them on there. I did not put them on the cuff. Um, I just put them on the pocket flap. So uh, that would be something that would be conjectural. Um, another thing that would not be conjectural would be where where the uh, lapel ends is generally about where the pop the top of the pocket flap is going to go, and that's going to line up with the uh, vent here and the uh, the vent in the back. So generally, those want to be all getting that right is is important. So we can talk a little bit about the difference between the um, enlisted man's coat and the officer's coat. And so the officer's coat is going to actually be made from a finer, thinner wool. They're both they're both made from 100% wool, but this is going to be a officer's wool, and it's going to be finer. Uh, the other biggest difference that you're going to see here is that these buttons that say DR on them are gilt, and or I'm sorry, those are pewter. These are the gilt ones, and. So that's the officer's button. Now, from what I understand, they've found these archeologically, but they haven't found these. I'm not 100% sure if that's actually true, but that's what I've heard. So another difference between the coats is this has got a closed pleat here. It's completely closed up and completely lined over, whereas the pleats on the officer's coat are open. And you got the button down there to hold the pleats together. So that's one difference. Uh, as you can see here also on this pocket flap, I did a feathered edge, which you would see. That's what that's called. Those are a pain to put together. Um, another difference on the officer's coat is I did do the, long, the false long work buttonholes on the cuffs. And that's definitely uh, conjectural, but most likely a possibility. And then also on the flaps up here, the differences, you see this is just regular. I did a feathered edge on the flap up there. So here we have a few original examples so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here with a lot of this stuff. You could see here that the buttonholes kind of angle upwards like I was talking about. That's uh, Henry Lawrence. And uh, another thing you see, which you see on a lot of these, is that the mistake people make is they make the lapels too long um, or too wide. Um, generally, two inches is basically the max you want to go on them uh, for early war. Um, I believe that's Alexander Hamilton. And look how narrow those lapels are. You can see they're not much wider than twice the length of the button. And so that's what I tried to go for on on those lapels there. Um, I believe that's, oh, it says it right there. It's John Cox. And you can kind of see there, same thing with the buttons angling upwards. And then this was the Von Germain image I was talking about. You can see the vertical pocket flap on there and then I tried to reproduce that image.